Sweet. Let's get this bad boy adjusted here. I need to go up a little bit. Sorry, guys. All right, cool. RT Clinic is live, and what, and what we're doing, we're talking about respiratory therapy and hurricanes, all right? I felt like I need to talk about this a little bit because I'm super excited about it. If you didn't know, Hurricane just hit Payroll City, and what was really special about it, well, it's, it was devastating, but my respiratory mind kind of got invigorated when I listened to the fact that it was one of the seven uh hurricanes that had the lowest amount of pressure inside of it so it brought a real low pressure in so what they what they were talking about these hurricanes such a low pressure system brings such a low pressure that comes in uh atmospheric pressure that comes in with the hurricane but it can really affect oxygenation of the people that are in the hurricane or nearby it i'm going to show you how it's really cool um but um just i'll show you some cool equations so this is the RD Clinic. My name is Jimmy McKenna. You've seen me before. If you watch my videos, please like, subscribe, comment. First time I've ever been live, but I want to rock this out real quick. So we need to figure from this pressure. So the pressure that came in with Hurricane Michael is 119, 919 millibars. So um, pretty low pressure. Um, and millibars, we're going to convert that over. So I'll do it right off the bat, just do a quick conversion because I like to work in TOR or millimeters of mercury, especially when it comes to my equations. So 919, the generic way to do it is divide by 1.333. And that's going to give you the same pressure, but it's going to give it to you in TOR. So this in TOR is 689 TOR, also known as um, millimeters of mercury, all about the same stuff. So this is this is what's important. So we know that sea level is 760 on a normal day tour, and that is how our oxygen is figured. So it's really actually pretty cool. So just to give you an idea of what we're looking at as far as oxygen goes, if we take a box of air, and let's say this is air, um, this is room air we're breathing here, and it's just a box of it at sea level, so it's 760. There's mercury. We're going to have this divided into a few major areas. So one's going to be um, seven. Well, actually, we're going to go right here in the middle. 21% of it is made up of something. 70, 78% is made up of something else. And then less than 1% is made up of other things. So what is this made up of? This box of air. Well, this is nitrogen. This is oxygen. There's our oxygen level. Um, that we have on room air, 0.21 or 21%. And this is all those other things, argon, CO2, everything else mixed in, makes up this, this part right here. So of this percentage, of this pressure of room air, we have 21% is oxygen. The same thing converts to, if you're on the top of, let's say, Pike's Peak, and the pressure's low up there, it's still only 21% oxygen, but I'm gonna show you what that kind of converts into. So there is an equation called P big A O2, and it looks exactly like this. It's really a cool equation. Now, I didn't think it was cool until after I graduated from RT school because in RT school, I just kind of memorized it so that I'd pass the test, but um, it, it really is a pretty cool one. So so there's the equation. This is P big A O2, C big A, so what we're measuring, that means partial pressure of oxygen inside the alveoli. So we have the alveoli and we have the arterial bloodstream. So these, this is your A to A gradient. So how much we put in the alveoli should get down into the blood, but it doesn't always do that uh, if you have disease processes and nine layers of tissue there and all that kind of fun stuff. But this is what I like to call available oxygen. So if we figure this equation for P big AO2, with 760, we put the 760 in this right here, this PB, which is barometric pressure. And this comes out to, at room air, at sea level, it's about 105-ish, okay, in here. 
tour of oxygen. So normal in our arterial system, you know, is 180. So it usually converts right across, no problem at all. So the hurricane comes in, comes into Panama City, running this really low pressure. I want to figure that up to see what the available oxygen was when that hurricane made landfall. Really cool stuff. So PB is going to be our barometric pressure and tour. So when we converted it over here, we looked at it, it was 689. Now, minus 47, what the heck is 47? So 47 is a known that we use to factor out um, um, dissolved water in the air. So inside of here, this is 100% humidity. So there's a lot of humidity inside your alveoli. And uh, so this is to factor out that water that's in the air. So 47 is our known for that. We multiply that times our FiO2. We know that our FiO2 fraction of inspired oxygen is 21%. Doesn't matter if you're at sea level, at the top of Mount Everest, it's 21%. So we subtract that by our PCO2 times 1.25. So normal PCO2 is 40. So with that being 40 times 1.25, this all comes out to 50 on this side of the equation. So we're going to figure this other side over here. So 789, I'm oh sorry, 689 minus 47 equals that times equals uh, 642 times 0 0.21 times 0 0.21 equals 134. Okay, so 134 minus 50. So 134 minus 50 equals 84. So this may not seem like a big deal to everybody that's not a respiratory therapist, um, but this is a pretty big deal. So this means 84 is the maximum amount of PaO2 you can have here. So even if your lungs are functioning appropriately, you're going to have 84 in your bloodstream and it can't go any higher. So people that are compromised at all, what's going to happen is they may increase their respiratory rate and they may have some difficulty because they cannot get the oxygen over their blood. So this is the pressure of oxygen. And what this comes out, it, when you measure it on, on your finger, I don't know if I've done a video on that before about how a pulse ox works, but it's actually pretty easy. So you measure it on your finger, and let's say this is 95%. So that's your percentage of oxygen in your blood, but we're looking at the pressure that's available. So your P big AO2 is the max it can be is 84. So your normal range in this case it's probably going to be like 84 to 64 is going to be normal in your arterial system. Now, I don't know about you, but my body doesn't, wouldn't like 84 or anywhere in between there to 64. So I might be a little bit shorter breath in that case because the oxygen is just not available because the pressure is not there because it dropped so far during the hurricane, which is just kind of amazing. So what would happen if the hurricane just sat there and just spun over days? Your body is really cool because it's actually made to compensate for that. So if it did now, it, it would flood, it would be terrible, devastating. But if it just sat there for days and you ran at this low oxygen level, what's going to happen is your body, your bone marrow is actually going to start producing more red blood cells. Because if you get more red blood cells floating around in your blood, it binds up all that extra oxygen a lot tighter to get it to the tissues to get it where it really needs to go. So you become polycythemic, your, your, your uh, bone marrow will start going through um, erythrocytosis and pumping out the erythrocytes to try to make up for the hypoxia that you had. So that could, that could be over hours, um, probably over days more like, but it, you know, it does definitely change. So just kind of a cool thing how the respiratory world relates to the hurricane world, right? Because uh, it's bad news. So, but those, when they show those pressures down, it's really cool to convert it to this amount of available oxygen you have going on. So normal PaO2 at sea level is 100 to 80. That's what most of us are living off of. If we get near 80, we get kind of short of breath. But when that hurricane came in, this was the available oxygen during that time. So uh, really interesting number. Um, and I really wonder if any people with lung disease felt short of breath when that came in. Maybe not just from anxiety, but maybe just from the lack of the amount of oxygen available for them. So anyway, first time RT Clinic's been live. I wanted to sh try it one time just because it's, I'm kind of excited about this pressure stuff. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, um, tell your friends to join and share me on some uh, sites and stuff. 
don't really have a functional YouTube page, but it's all good because I or not well, a functional Facebook page, but I do have a YouTube page that you're watching right now. So um, anyway, thanks. I'll see you later.